Hi there, Doug Stuman with IT Creations with another new platform from HPE. Admittedly, this platform has been out for a while, but sometimes we've sold all of our units before I get a chance to review them. I'm talking about the HP ProLiant M0110 Gen 10 server. It's not the most powerful, but it does provide a very compelling assortment of enterprise features that you could easily put to work in your remote or branch office, even your home office. Let's take a look. As an entry to mid-level system, it offers an impressive performance to cost ratio, which we're not gonna get into because pricing information never ages well. But what I will tell you is that the HPE ProLiant ML110 Gen 10 server has a single socket for an Intel Xeon scalable processor, six memory slots, and up to 16 drive bays up front. It's also very quiet for those front office or living room deployments, putting out a modest 30 decibels under load. The case itself has a perforated bezel up front, and the black satin finish and vertical perforations definitely make you think they use the same designer who did the interiors of the Death Star. Behind the bezel, you'll find either four or eight 3.5 inch storage bays in one or two separate drive cages. Another configuration has eight 2.5 inch drive bays, again with the option for another eight in separate drive cage for 16 drives total. From the top down, there's a small control panel on the upper right with telltale lights for health and NIC status, plus a power on button. Below the control panel, at the bottom of the chassis, are two USB 3.0 slots, plus a dedicated port on the left for access to ILO. Wait a minute, are you interested in this system? If you are, then for a limited time, you can save up to $250 off the purchase of an HPE ProLiant ML110 Gen 10 server tower listed on our site at $2,500 or more. That's right, just click that button to see pricing, and when you're ready to make a purchase, just mention this video. We have all the memory, storage, GPUs, CPUs, network cards, and what night you may need to outfit your system. And it's just a click away. Oh, and one more thing, if you like these videos and specials delivered right to your inbox, subscribe to our channel. On the back of the system, again starting at the top, you have either a fixed PSU supporting either a 350 or 550 watt PSU for a cost effective solution. Alternatively, you could go with dual redundant flex slot 500 or 800 watt PSUs offering redundancy and support for other features like redundant fans. Just below, there's an exhaust fan for the CPUs and memory, and on the left, a UID button, VGA port, two RJ45 network ports, two USB 2.0, and two USB 3.0 and a management port to access the integrated lights out port. Below those are the PCI slots, which we will see in a moment. That knob next to the PCI slots, it secures the PCI cards. Once we remove the side panel, you can see two removable plastic cowls that direct fresh air over the processors and memory and PCI slots. To the right, a sliding lock secures the front bezel to access the drive bays. As you can see, there's a large fan on the lower portion and just above that, drive cage one a second drive cage supporting either four 3.5 inch drives or up to eight 2.5 inch drives can be installed above the first drive cage. But I should mention, there's no mixing of LFF with SFF drive cages. For now, we only have the one drive cage on both of our chassis. Management of the system is through HPE's integrated lights out version five out of band management module. It offers alerting, reporting, and remote management of the system at no extra cost. Of course, that would be for the standard version, which doesn't offer the full feature set as on the premium or premium security edition. Those cost extra. HPE's silicone root of trust ensures the security of the product from manufacturer until it's shipped out to the customer. Enhanced security features ensure your data is not compromised and any firmware, BIOS, or OS updates are authenticated before installation. If software is found to be compromised, the server will default to the latest known good state. There's also a new workload performance advisor and an ILO security dashboard. Processors supported on this system include those from the bronze, silver, and gold categories with up to 16 cores and 110 watts. And that includes both first and second generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. Of course, with second generation processors, you get faster memory speeds of up to 2933 megatransfers per second instead of a top speed of only 2666 megatransfers per second. Although I should note that only one of the supported processors supports that top memory speed, the gold 5222. The two other processors we have here will support 2666 megatransfers or 2133 megatransfers respectively. We didn't have the bronze 3204, but we do have the 3104, which has a very similar spec and supports the same memory speed. Three memory module slots to either side of the processor support a maximum of 192 gigabytes of memory using 32 gigabyte registered DIMM modules. Load reduced, non-volatile, and Intel's new Optane memory modules are not supported. I mean, what did you expect? This is an entry level system. I am a little surprised they didn't give a bump on the memory capacity with the second generation processors. I guess I could make that statement with the first gen processors too, but let's move on. One more thing to note, no turbo boost or hyper threading support on the bronze processors, at least not any that are supported on this machine. 
This system supports SAS and SATA hot plug and non-hot plug drives, either 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch HDDs and SSDs. And as I mentioned earlier, mixing of drive cages is not supported. Unfortunately, there are no M.2 slots on the motherboard. M.2 drives are only supported using an optional HPE Universal SATA half-height, half-length M.2 kit, which can support two M.2 drives in a RAID using the integrated S100i SATA controller for redundancy, or just a single M.2 drive. M.2 SSDs are a great option for booting the system, so you can use all those upfront drives for storage. There's also a micro SD card slot on the system board for hypervisor support. Up to 14 drives are supported using the integrated S100i controller, but for more controller over your storage or for support of SAS drives, you will need an HPE Smart Array controller. And again, you have options for HPE Essential controllers like the E208i or E-PSR Gen 10 RAID controller, or for performance applications, the P408i or E-PSR Gen 10 controllers. Although a performance RAID controller will require a smart storage battery, you guessed it, sold separately. Five PCI 3.0 slots can be used to support additional workloads with advanced HD RAID controllers like we just talked about. You can also install additional network controllers that support two to four ports with either 10 gigabit ethernet or one gigabit ethernet connection speeds. And that would be in addition to the integrated dual one gigabit ethernet ports on the back of the system. A maximum of two NVIDIA Quadro P2000 or an AMD Radeon Pro WX2100 graphics accelerator, both of which are single width cards, can be installed in the system for graphics support. If you're a little short on space or simply don't have a need for a separate server room, the HPE ProLine ML110 Gen 10 Tower Server is a great choice. It's so quiet you won't even know it's there, especially if you outfit the system with SSDs. And with room for up to 16 storage devices, there's room to grow. Make no mistake, this is an enterprise server with the same high-end features you'll find on HPE's workhorse servers. Power consumption is also not going to break the bank. IT Creations has this server in stock and the components to custom configure to your specifications. Just give us a call and shop online at itcreations.com. If you have any questions or comments on this server or any other, post them in the comments section below. I'm Doug Stumann with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.